Hello, everybody. It's Monsignor Ricci once again, coming to you live streamed from St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Uh, every Tuesday at this time, for as long as it takes, um, I will be here to answer some questions that have been sent into us uh, for answering uh, from our perspective. So let me get to the questions. The first question, how can we go to confession during Lent to fulfill the Easter obligation? Well, the Easter obli the, uh, obligation for confession is that we are to go to confession at least once a year. It doesn't have to be at, at the Easter time. It can be any time during the year. So um, the Easter time uh, part of the, the rules has to do with receiving Holy Communion, at least during the Easter season. So we can wait. Obviously, Lent is the best time to go to confession. It is a time of penance. It's the perfect time for all of us who have been taking Lent seriously. It's one of the actions that each of us would have taken um, during the holy season of Lent. Uh, so, but the obligation is at least once a year. And if we're saints, we probably don't even have to do that. But even the saints go to confession uh, during the year. Uh, the second question that somebody sent to us, can lay people create holy water or must a priest do this? If we can create our own holy water for our homes during this crisis, where can we find a holy water font? Um, as far as I know, there is a blessing for water that's a blessing that the priest does. Um, during the sacrament of baptism, the water is blessed in a special way. And there's also a separate blessing for water that has been a traditional one for, for, for centuries. But as far as I know, only a priest can do that. Um, if we have holy water in the house, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, I know in my house, we have plenty of holy water that came from Lourdes in France, and it's a, a source of comfort um, to us who are at St. Patrick's uh, Rectory that we know we have the water uh, that came from the spring that the Our Lady was, is so much connected to. Um, so I think to get holy water, you might have to just wait until the crisis is over. Um, in many churches, the holy water was taken away from the fonts where people would dip their fingers and, and make the sign of the cross as they entered the church. Uh, but in most places, that has been uh, done away with during the health crisis that we're involved in now. So just be patient, um, and holy water will come back as we hope everything will come back soon. Uh, third question, what is the best way that I can be a steward and Catholic during this unprecedented time? This comes from a lady from South Carolina. Uh, certainly here at the cathedral, one of the things that we do every day is we live stream the mass. Uh, we do it at seven in the morning, and it's available all, all during the day. Um, and during the Mass, we ask uh, if people can donate uh, because we have no income coming in, uh, as most parishes are like that. There's very little income coming in except for those who are on uh, automatic um, credit card uh, programs where, where they still take care of their parishes even though they can't go into the churches. So we have our live stream and we ask uh, each day, whatever you can help us with, we'll be very grateful. Um, I spoke to somebody just recently who sent uh, a nice check to us to help us in, during this time. And after conversation with him, I'm thanking him, he, he said, well, I did the same thing for my own parish. So uh, I have to certainly say that anybody who wants to donate to us online or just by sending us some, something in the mail would definitely be a good steward and Catholic at the same time. And we should never forget our own parishes we should never forget Catholic Charities and the Cardinal's Appeal for those of us who are in New York. Um, there are many ways, uh, but it probably all has to do with doing things electronically or on, online. And the fourth question, is there a way that we can receive Holy Communion on Easter despite these difficult times? Well, as far as I know, uh, very few churches uh, anywhere in the country or at least here in the East, uh, will be open for Mass. Uh, and so to receive Holy Communion would be very difficult, I think impossible for most uh, people. But as we do every morning, uh, there's an act of spiritual communion, which isn't as good 
but it is certainly something that we can do. And each morning, if you uh, listen to our live stream or watch us, uh, you can join for the spiritual communion prayer, which is very beautiful and, and powerful. It's not the same. And certainly on Easter Sunday, it would be a, a great difficulty for all of us if we were not able to receive Holy Communion. And for most of us, that's going to be the case this year. We have no idea how long the crisis that we're involved in now is going to last. Uh, we have to continue to pray for our country, uh, for the people who has the coronavirus, uh, the people who are doing such a wonderful and powerful job in fighting it, the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, uh, the healthcare professionals in, in all, uh, at all levels. They deserve not only our applause, but also our prayers. We should pray for them. And for those who have died, obviously we pray for the dead. It's a great Catholic tradition that we never forget to pray for the dead. And so we remember those who have passed away, those who have died during this time, uh, we just, and we pray especially that there will be an end to the suffering and an end to the crisis that we're going through now. And we ask God to help us continue to pray for that, and we ask God to make, make sure that something good comes soon. So those are the questions for this week. Um, I hope I answered them to your liking. Um, uh, next Tuesday, I'll be back here with uh, more questions from more people. So God bless you all. Stay safe, wash your hands, pray for all of us. Thank you.